Hi everyone, Dorota Palicka International, nail artist and educator here. And today we are going to paint a beautiful turquoise uh, orchid. You can have a wee preview in here. Yeah, that's a one stroke flowers, uh, slightly a different type of flowers. And I thought uh, it will be pretty interesting to show you uh, not only roses and like a basic five petal flowers, but also something different. And that's why I thought uh, orchid is going to be a perfect example of that. So let's start this tutorial. So orchid this time, so you can uh, see it as like a wee tiny flowers uh, of the orchids on the stream. And I will show you how to paint this design. I really like this color for the orchids. I don't know why, just maybe because um, all different flowers I painting like um, pinks and purples, blues. So for orchid, this color, like this kind of turquoise color is really nice. I've got my uh, black tips already, but you can do it this design on any kind of color and it will look super cool on any other color too So I'm just creating a couple scratches on my tip Just so the paint gets better and I'm using the softer side of my buffer like I don't want the scratches to be too Strong because then the paint can get stuck in there and we are going to use the turquoise number 24 So I'm just squeezing out a small amount of it And you have seen me painting one stroke before uh, light yellow i like to use few colors just so the things are even prettier and then tiny bit of green and um, i quite like this green as well for the leaves it has really nice and natural colors it's uh, number 28 and of course the white Okay, we are going to use the Demaster brush, so that's my one stroke brush, level two, and I really like it. It's so nice and tiny and very precise. Okay, I have cleaned it well, like sometimes the brushes when they're not used, they, they tend to kind of stiff a little bit, so um, I kind of introduced some water into it. Green, yellow, turquoise, kind of all of them into my D-liner brush to paint the steam of the orchid and for a change I'm going to do one from the top just like a wee tiny one and then the one from the bottom I'm just creating kind of like a wee wave And now is the time to paint the orchids. So the orchid you want to paint like starting with the three petals which are on the back. And I want them to be more yellow and turquoise. So my colors are going to mix. The paint for the one stroke has to be a nice and creamy consistency. If you start feeling it's too dry, just introduce more water into it. And I want one orchid to be there. So it's just a touch almost straight brush I'm not lying the brush because those petals are so tiny that's if I would lie my brush it will become too too large and then three other pet two other petals so we've got three in total Okay, I'm mixing my paint. Lift your brush up and I'm trying to make them kind of like more of a triangle shape. Uh, so to do that, the white, like the yellow part is at the angle. Then straight brush and then at the angle again just so this turquoise part is not too white. And exactly the same on the place where we are going to paint another orchid. So say if I've got one in here, another one can be there. The more to the top I'm going, the smaller the orchids are going to be. Okay, and then here, I'm going to have 
maybe another one like very tiny one I have touch up and then some bats so for the bats I'm really just touching And on the top one, we've got only bats. Okay, so that's the first part of painting the orchid design. Squeeze my brush. And now I'm going to pick up yellow and white. I want the petals uh, to be more visible. And they are going to be a kind of uh, C letter petals. So this is this top petal is your middle, and we want to just paint like a letter C. So the brush goes at the angle. And you're doing just a touches really till you get to the middle petal. I'm picking up the paint again. I'm going to paint exactly the same on the other side. So starting where in the middle of the top petal. Okay, same in here. Now other side. If you start feeling your paint doesn't paint good, uh, just pick up the fresh one. I tend to always like pick up lots of paint. And you can see my hand kind of uh, lifts up and if I lift my hand up I go half a millimeter before the place I have uh, finished. Hope that makes sense. So uh, maybe I explain it on the, oh gosh, makes it wrong. Maybe I explain it on the side. So I pick up two colors. I blend them well. Okay, and then now I'm going to explain that on the side. So my hand goes, I would massage the paint lift my hand up and I don't start in the same place because if I do then you've got like a not nice line so don't do this you want to pick up your paint mix it well and you want to go like massage the paint and each time go one millimeter before the place you have finished or even yeah one millimeter is best so this way you get a really nice blending Okay, and never touch the paint which is still wet because then it goes then it goes messy. So I'm picking up the paint again. Now these petals are going to be tiny. So I have to be very careful how I'm painting those petals and I'm not using full brush. I'm working more with the tip of my brush rather than a full brush because I want to create much smaller petals. If I would press too hard and use full brush the petals would be much bigger. So I'm only working with my three quarter of the brush. If we're really fancy and we want the flowers to be even more beautiful, you could go and do a round number two. 
just so they stand out even better and they look much prettier. Okay, I have mixed my paint and I'm going to, at least on this petal, I'm going to go second row. So my first petal, the brush is at the angle. I can't go like this. I need to like the turquoise needs to touch turquoise and then the yellow white needs to touch white. Then I'm changing the angle of my brush. Okay, mix another paint. And just go over exactly the same place which we have painted. Okay, now I can just finish off this design with the detail. So for the middle, we're going to use the yellow, lots of water in. Always for the details, I use lots of water. It's a wee triangle for the middle. This is kind of a basic middle of the orchid. So wee triangle, wee triangle, a bit more water. We want to kind of prolong it. Now green again, you can touch it with a bit of yellow. And the steam, I want to kind of go and um, touch the wee bats which we've got on the top, just so they are not flying in the air. Same the bats which are in here. And now just a couple of dots and basically that's the orchid finished. So it's nothing overly too complicated once you know the step by step uh, how to recreate it. So a couple of the dots. Now dots are very damaging for the brush. So you have to be really almost not touching the tip of the brush, like be very, very gentle or use your old brush to create the dots. I want to also add a little bit of detail, so very watery white. You can even mix it with the yellow. Just so those bats looks nicer. And we can take a little bit of white if we want a little bit more definition on the flowers itself, especially in this part in the middle. Like that's, that's exchanged quite a lot. I've got hardly any paint on my brush. So very little paint, quite a lot of water, but you don't want to apply too much water because then the design got too watery and it can kind of go on the places you don't want to. So you've got to try it yourself a couple of times, like what kind of consistency is best for painting like a very small detail.
Okay, and that's basically that's the orchid finished. We could kind of do it maybe a swirly bit as well. Like the roots. So imagine it is coming out from this part. We swirl a bit. Just so there is something. Wait a couple seconds for the paint to dry and then we can apply the top coat. Uh, with the top coat application, the design pops out like it's always looking much prettier with the one stroke. I'm just applying a can already see how much nicer it becomes. So cute little orchids and it, it can be any color. Um, the only tip I can give you guys is when you're mixing the colors make sure the color creates a third color in the middle. So I wouldn't mix maybe turquoise with I don't know brown say example. This one goes in. Uh, gosh, hands. <laughs> this tip goes in. I just was thinking too much about uh, mixing the colors. So yellow and turquoise will create like a kind of greenish in the middle. Uh, white and red will create pink in the middle. So this is a good combination of the colors. Red and yellow is good as well because we've got red, orange, yellow. Uh, blue and this two will look nice together as well and purple and yellow that will go really well too uh, blue and white so you kind of have to pick up the colors which will create your first color in the middle and uh, this way first of all the designs looks much nicer and then secondly um, you are not going to kind of I don't know make an ugly color in the middle if that makes sense so watch for, I don't know, trying to paint a beautiful flower and then you've got, say, one color in the middle, you create some ugly one and then the third color, that wouldn't look nice. And then that's, that's them both finished. Trying to get rid of the light reflection. Yeah, little cute orchids. And I think it will look really, really nice on... Uh, different colors as well, like uh, on a white news, uh, or even on a color like a pale pink or pale, um, pale, actually lilac color will go with this design as well. Anyway, I hope you have guys really enjoy watching this tutorial, uh, Glittery Hex, and bye for now. Mm -hmm.